Ever wondered what food do Gurkha soldiers eat? From aromatic spices to mouth-watering momos, we're gonna discover the flavors of Nepalese cuisine. Hey guys, and welcome back to season five of Food Finders. Now in this season, we're trying something slightly different. We're gonna try some more culturally... Unique Yes. Foods. So obviously the team up is a bit different today. Um, we are going with maybe Genly.com. I think Gkoi.com would be maybe, better. Maybe. But anyways, we've taken over Food Finders this episode. I'm still here, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Hi. Hi, Seth. The short-handed. I'm gonna tell you where to eat. I am putting like my complete faith in him right now. We're gonna start with Nepalese. Nepalese, Nepalese. food. Nepalese. What is your experience with Nepalese food? Never had Nepalese food. I know from my dad's travel. I know he's a cool guy. He always travels to Nepal, but he always come home and tell me like it's super cold there. Eh? Yeah. So I would expect their food to be very hearty, very warming, which. You know, not really helping our case in this really hot time. What's the first thing that comes to mind when uh, we mention Nepal? It's like the pink cheeks. Nepal. No, like the babies there and the little what? kids, right? They have like very pink cheeks. I, I thought Gurkhas, because I used to live behind the Gurkha contingency and I used to see them early in the morning. The guys are just working out 24-7. They look buff. Yeah. I would not want to mess with them. So I would imagine their meal to be very high calorie. I guess we'll find out when we try out Napolis with this episode. <laughs> Nepal is mainly in the Himalayas and borders India. Frequently, the Nepali depend less on cooking fats and more on new vegetables, less fatty meats and salad greens. The Nepali eat substantially less bread like naan or chapati. Their common spices include ginger, garlic, Sichuan pepper, fenugreek seeds, turmeric, cumin, cilantro and green chilies. Our first location is the Himalaya kitchen uh, somewhere in MacPherson Street. MacTaggart. Huh? It's McTaggart Road, right? Yeah, McPherson. Huh? McPherson. Hello, Singaporean, huh? It started by Nepalese people, so I'm having very high expectations. We've been told that it also has raw ingredients imported from Nepal, so that should be quite interesting to see what type of ingredients. Let's go in. There's so much Indian food inside here. I'm trying to find the Nepalese inside. I don't know. Seth is actually ordering for us, so. Ooh. Yeah, we have the so what you're having is the Batmas Sadeko, Nepali soybean spicy salad that goes well with beer. There's no beer. It's 11 a.m. There's no beer. 15 minutes to 12. You know what it reminds me of? Spicy natto. I've never had natto. <gasps> okay, let's try this. Yeah, spicy natto. Mmm. It's not spicy at all. It's like wasabi peas. Oh, but it's so refreshing. It's very refreshing. Like as a bar snack, it's like... Very, very spicy, very bright, very crunchy. Mm. There's a lot of texture in there. Okay. I think they use like quite a lot of onions, tomatoes, cilantro, and like mixed spices. And then they just toss it with the fried soybeans. This is like another dimension of flavor. Mm. It's hard to explain. Honestly, I've <laughs> never really had these flavor profiles before. So that makes it like extremely unique. This is the chicken sakua. It's basically chicken barbecue marinated in a blend of Himalayan herbs and spices. Are we supposed to eat the chicken and bite the chili? Uh, it's up to you, yeah. Some Gurkha guys, they will just take the chili just like that and then mm -hmm. bite it, yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, usually in the nights and then they usually hold their parties and like section parties so they'll be like hardcore having the beer tower and wow. all of this yeah, like I food. Can, yeah. I, can, I, can I can see, see the beer tower. tower. Yes, yeah. yeah. Sometimes they will drink us dry like the, the barrels will be all gone, oh, you know, so yeah. Hmm, <laughs> is this only ginger in this one? It's like a really good tandoori. There's this like underlining flavor and I can't pick it out, but good, good, very good. Super good, I picked the red one. It's really nice because like the chicken is very spiced and heavy. So when you bite into the chili, it's refreshing a bit. I feel like there's a common theme in like their dishes. It's always like deep flavors, harsh, strong flavors, and very bright things coming together. Why do you think the uh, Napolese are uh, so fit? Because they train in high altitudes. Yes, correct. I'm a smart cookie! You smart cookie. So when they exercise at high altitudes, it gives the body less oxygen per breath and uh, it makes your body work harder. La. That's why the porters and all the Gurkhas are all very very fit. Is there a lot of Gurkha athletes? No, right? 
From what I know, Gurkhas or Nepalis, like, there's a heavy emphasis on military. The men really fight hard, as in, like, it is their dream to be part of that Gurkha military, military right? To be in that contingent. So, not want to mess with them. Secret yummy sauce. Secret yummy sauce. Yes. Turmeric. I don't know, you just taste it for yourself, see if you can get it. Jen usually has a better uh, taste tasting. I'm just like, mmm. It's the pork beer! It's a quite bite thing! Okay, so what you're having is the vegetable momo. Momos are steamed dumplings that originated from Tibet and Nepal. It comes with a special sauce. Mmm. Dumpling, yum. Mm. The skin, so nice and chewy. Chewy. And not thick. The way they also wrap it, it's not normal. Like the filling, even though it's all vegetarian, it's super flavorful. I just want to wrap my head around this special sauce. sauce. I wonder if it's coriander root. Coriander root, very strong. You think so? It's yes, coriander root? Very strong. Why do you think it's orange? Turmeric? I, turmeric? I think it's just turmeric. You think it's turmeric? The main secret ingredient is actually sesame seeds. <gasps> What? That's a bit of turmeric, uh, but no coriander root. It's freaking good. Yes. Like, every single dish is just eye-opening. Yes. Very unique. Yes. <laughs> Say something else. No, right. literally, like, I 100% <laughs> agree. A unique version of everything you thought you knew, but have never actually tried this food. It makes sense that all of this dishes is very warming. Like, it creates, like, a heat inside you. Ah. Uh. With the spices. So it makes sense that it is for, like, the higher altitude, the colder climate. Actually, it makes me want to work out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, we're here at the second location, Gurkha Palace. And I feel like the decor is even more fancier than just now. Apparently very traditional, but on the higher level scale, I guess? With fries as well? Hopefully not. So I'm actually quite excited because the previous place was so good already. And with more history with this place, I'm looking forward at what other things we can find that is more Nepalese. Namaste. 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 So very, very fancy place we have here. Even the tableware is like... Fancy. This is cool. The, the menu itself, there's a lot of uh, similarities to the dishes. Actually, more types of momo here. There's a chili momo, there's a jol wow. momo. But after like, you know, ingesting all this food, does it inspire you to become like a Gurkha soldier? <laughs> <shoulder? laughs> just not the... <laughs> Gary. Gary! I would love to like try keeping up with them on like just a one day routine. If you have connections, send him there. <laughs> we'll make a whole video out of it. I promise. A short handed. So Gurkhas are actually part of the Singapore police force. In 2004, three armed fugitives escaped from Johor, Malaysia for committing armed robbery and fled to Pulau Tekong. Over 700 people from the police and the Singapore armed forces were activated, but the first fugitive was actually captured by Gurkha officers. Wow. If you don't know what Gurkhas is and you don't you haven't researched or anything, just think Asian people, but Rambo style. Now on to the food, yeah. Yeah, what is that? All right, the first dish we have the brown looking one is called sukuti. Sukuti is a dried meat product of Nepalese origin consumed in the Himalayan regions of India and Tibet, usually made with buffalo, lamb, or goat meat. It's very soft. It's very juicy. It's got a nice crust on the outside. Mm. And then as you bite into it, it's like braised meat. It, it's very obvious that it's deep fried ah. and then cooked with the spices. The caramelization is very well rounded. Like every piece, the whole thing is crispy. But then when you bite in, it's very juicy. This is really amazing with just rice. Okay, so that's the chicken choila. It's a traditional Nepalese dish. Loves for its bold, flavorful blend of spices, smokiness, and typically comes with flattened rice. So mix it. Yeah, so you're supposed to mix the rice and the chicken together. Uh, chicken sekua. Oh, that's a lot cleaner than I expected. This chicken dish, although it looks similar in color and stuff, the flavor profile is quite different. The other one had a lot more of that tandoori Indian aspect to it. And this one is really clean with the not Belize spices, I guess. It but was like the combination of the tandoori like chicken thing and the soybean. Yeah. Is this dish? Is this one? Okay, so this is chicken pengra, which is basically gizzard, commonly eaten with drinks and beer. Ooh, do you like gizzard? No, 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 no. This is where my angmonis comes out. Try, try, try. Gizzards. Actually, I don't, I don't know if this is good, but let's try. 
it does for us. Okay. Mm. It is not bad. There's not really a flavor to it. But I just want to say though, maybe not my favorite type of desserts. This one is like they, they fried it into like this, like crackling, and I'm like, mm -hmm. If you didn't tell me it was gizzard, I would not have recognized that this was a uh, gizzard. The flavor is not pungent, it's not gamey or your regular awful taste. Like liver has a very livery taste. This one does not. I have a question though. Why do people eat awfuls? Is it nutritional? I think it's more of just a necessity. It's also sustainability. Yeah, sustainability. Eat the whole animal. I think we had a lot more meat dishes this time. Definitely more meat dishes of this like time. Nepalese cuisine. Yeah. If you came here, I dare you to order this and not tell your friends and just let them try it and tell them later that it's gizzard. But I feel like the cooking styles, I would say, it overlaps quite a lot. It's very consistent. We are gonna walk next door to the last spot. Just next door, we have arrived at Everest Kitchen. Apparently opened by an ex Gurkha soldier, British Gurkha soldier. He wants to kind of share the Nepalese cuisine to locals and he was very passionate about the flavors of his home country. And actually, Gurkha Palace and Everest Kitchen is owned by the same guy. Yeah, but yeah. I think the biggest difference is over there, it's more like restaurant sit-down style. And this place looks a little bit more casual, more bistro, uh, a it's bit like more a drinks. Good night out. <laughs> yeah, like a drinks, drinks focus area. So we're just going to try it out. The options are like yeah. chicken popcorn, chicken nuggets, Really, really bar food. Oh, oh! Is that chow mein? Yeah, it's not my best today. I'm making me crush up. So I think producer Seth is yeah. very good at pacing our meals. You know, a lot of starters at the first place. Yeah. A lot of mid dishes in the middle. Yeah. And now it's all the carbs. And they like a Chinese buffet, a Chinese banquet. So this is called the Y Y Sat Heiko. Y Y. Flavorful Napali snack made by mixing instant noodles with fresh vegetable spices and seasoning. Exactly the same as the soybeans at the first place. The onions is a bit too strong. Mm. It's like hitting my nose, oh my god. I feel, I feel the flavor could be more pungent, that sauciness. The sauciness. I don't get the same flavor impact. Not as balanced. Mm. Tibetans who actually settled in Nepal brought chow mein with them to Nepal, so it has that Chinese influence. I, I like it. I think it's a well-cooked chow mein, well-seasoned. It's chow mein with the slight twist of that Nepalese spice. It's subtle, so it's like, it just tastes like standard chow mein at the beginning, and then that subtle, spicy at the very end. And what makes it authentic is, I can taste the MSG. <laughs> <laughs> MSG is king, king of, of flavor. flavor. Okay, so the last one is, uh, we made one round back to Momo. It's a Joel Momo, which is a variation of the Momo served in a hot, spicy broth. And this is a chicken Momo this time. Chicken Momo. Momo. Is it spicy? It's very hot. It's, I mean, very it's, it's been yeah. steaming since it's been here. It's, um... Are you like in love with hot and sour soup? Yeah, I love hot and sour soup. He didn't even wait for us, he just dived right in. Mm. The soup is good. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. This is just drunk food 101. Uh. The soup is like our hot and sour soup. It's similar. But not the same. More straightforward flavors. The lime in it or something? Like it's not like a vinegar, vinegar sour. It's vinegar. Is it a vinegar sour? It's vinegar. The momo itself, really nice. Very silky, chewy, not too thick and a lot of filling from Nepal, Nepalese cuisine. I think they take their momos really seriously. It's like their highlights. All right, and that's it for today's episode of this adventurous uh, Nepalese food excursion. Jen, what was your kind of favorite stuff for today? I'm gonna claim all the momos in the world. So if you ever go to any Nepalese restaurant, cafe, whatever, if there's momos on the menu, it's gonna be good and they have so many options for it. My favorite was the Batma Sadeko. I thought that was just just refreshing, spicy, crunchy, and the flavor profile, like I've never had that in my mouth before. I think it's been an amazing day trying out something completely different, but readily available here in Singapore. Hope to see you in the next one, where Gary becomes a girl. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah. just let us know what other cuisines you want us to try. The thing for this season is new experiences. Yeah. If you have any recommendations, put it down in the comments. Let us know. Oh yeah, that too. <laughs>